Lately, I've done a lot of videos talking about who the best team in college football is or ranking unbeaten teams. Today, we are going to completely flip the script and talk about who is the worst team in college football so far this year. We're going to go through each conference, talk about the worst team in each conference, and then overall, we'll decide on who takes the cake and is the worst team in the country. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe as we're on the road to 100k here. Leave a like if you want to support the video and the channel. Let me know a topic or player I could cover next and turn on notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now, let's get started. So let's first start with the American Conference. And there are two that are contending for the worst team. The first one is Navy. And despite them getting off to a one and three start, I'm going to put them in second to last in order to go at USF. After some decent years under Willie Taggart and Charlie Strong, USF has been a complete dumpster fire with Jeff Scott at the helm. He arrived from Clemson with a lot of hype, but so far in his three years, the program has really made no traction. So far this year, they got blown out in week one by BYU, beat Howard in week two, and then survived a close one on the road against Florida. That game was pretty shocking, but they went back to their losing ways as they got killed on the road by Louisville, and then got beat by double digits against Eastern Carolina. The sad part is USF went from a team that was usually at the top to now at the complete bottom of the conference. They are dysfunctional in a lot of ways, and this team is going to need a lot of help to get back to what they once were. For now, USF is the worst in the American. The ACC is a very weird league this year. There are seven teams that have won four or more games, and then there are five schools who are all two and three. It'd be very difficult to come up with who the worst is, but we're first going to eliminate Louisville. They have wins over both UCF and USF, and they've had a tough schedule. While Georgia Tech has not looked great throughout the season, their weekend over number 24 Pitt actually doesn't put them at the bottom in my opinion. While Virginia Tech has losses to Old Dominion, West Virginia, and North Carolina, they also have a win over Boston College, so it'd be impossible to put them below the Eagles. The Eagles have not looked great this year as they lost to Rutgers, Virginia Tech, and Florida State, but they obviously have that win over Louisville. That leaves us with one last team, and that is the Virginia Cavaliers. They returned two star receivers in Keaton Thompson and Dontavian Wicks, brought in head coach Tony Elliott from Clemson, and returned arguably the best passer in the ACC in Brennan Armstrong. Unfortunately, everything has completely fallen apart as they got blown out by Illinois, lost to Syracuse, and got blown out by Duke. They also got tested by Richmond and barely beat Old Dominion. The offense has been completely dead, and it looks like all the hope that was building in Virginia is now lost. They are the worst team in the ACC. Moving over to the Big 12, there are nine teams that have three or more wins, so the only logical team to go with is West Virginia. While some might make an argument for Oklahoma being the worst right now, West Virginia has losses to Pittsburgh and Kansas, and then recently lost to Texas. While two of those three games have been somewhat competitive, they have the worst record in the conference, and with how loaded the Big 12 is this year, it's gonna be hard for them to find wins. For now though, the Mountaineers are the worst team in the Big 12. There's not much of a debate as to who is the worst team in the Big 10, as while well, Wisconsin and Michigan State are both two and three and have looked very bad lately, Northwestern has just been horrific. I really don't know how they beat Nebraska in week zero, but they found a way to get a conference win, and technically, they're at the top of the Big Ten West right now. It's absolutely ridiculous, as they would then lose to Duke, lose at home to Southern Illinois, lose at home to Miami of Ohio, and then lose to Penn State. The Wildcats have lost four straight games, have lost to an FCS school, and they're in a dark spot. The Wildcats are at the bottom of the Big Ten. Moving over to Conference USA, it's a bit of a log jam at the top, but there are two teams that only have one win. The first one is Louisiana Tech. The Panthers have already had to play on the road against both Missouri and Clemson, and then also lost to South Alabama. They've only played in four games, whereas Charlotte has now played in six games. They got beat badly on the road in week one against Florida Atlantic, lost to FCS William & Mary, got beat by Maryland, lost to South Carolina, and then lost to UTEP. The team is 1-5, with their only win coming as a one-point victory over Georgia State. And at one point, Charlotte looked like they were on the rise, but for now, they are going to be the worst team in Conference USA. As we now move over to the Independents, there are a couple of schools battling it out for the worst team. UConn is not on that list. That is a pleasant surprise for Husky fans, as Jim Moore has done a tremendous job in year one for them. First team is Army. They got beat by Coastal Carolina in week one, and then lost to UTSA in week two. They have a win over Villanova, and a loss to Georgia State. The team is one and three, and I don't think they're the worst team there. UMass is a close second, as they've lost to Tulane, Toledo, Temple, and Eastern Michigan, and got their lone win over Stony Brook. While none of those losses will qualify as good losses, the Minutemen have at least been a little bit more competitive than years past. The worst independent team is gotta be New Mexico State. Jerry Kill is now the head coach, and the team has not been any good. They got beat by a really bad Nevada team in week one, got blanked by Minnesota in week two, lost on the road to UTEP, got murdered by Wisconsin, and then lost to Florida International, who is also horrible. Their lone win came against Hawaii, 
and right now the Aggies are at the bottom. As we head over to the MAC, it's actually a somewhat difficult race as to who is the worst. We're first going to start with Akron. They beat St. Francis in week one before they get killed by both Michigan State, Tennessee, and Liberty in the following three weeks. In a battle for the bottom of the MAC, they'd end up losing to Bowling Green, and they're off to a 1 and 4 start. Central Michigan's had a little bit more of a difficult schedule. They played Oklahoma State, Penn State, and at Toledo, and their other loss came to South Alabama, who's actually a pretty decent team. Their lone win came over Bucknell, and for the most part, this team has actually been pretty competitive, they just have more losses. I'm going to eliminate them. Northern Illinois is probably the most disappointing team in the conference, as it seemed they were going to be at the top. Their schedule hasn't been that great, as they had a 7-point victory over Eastern Illinois, before they lose to Tulsa, Vanderbilt, Kentucky, and Ball State. They actually played in all four of those games pretty competitively, and while Northern Illinois might be the most disappointing, I think Akron is the worst in the conference. There is absolutely no debate as to who is the worst team in the Mountain West. What's wild is this might be the worst Mountain West conference we have seen in years, but Colorado State is absolutely horrific. They got killed 51-7 in Week 1, got blown out by Middle Tennessee in Week 2, killed by Washington State in Week 3, and then they got beat by FCS Sacramento State 41-10. The Rams have looked completely non-competitive, and with them having one of the higher budgets in the Mountain West and a supposed good coach in Jay Norvell, there is absolutely no reason for this. The Rams have been horrible, and with how Jay Norvell left Nevada, he might be cursed. Colorado State is in a dark spot, and they are definitely the worst Mountain West team, and could be the worst team in college football. As we head over to the Pac-12, there's also a clear worst team. While both Stanford and Arizona State only have one win, Colorado has been absolutely terrible. They recently fired head coach Carl Durrell after an 0-5 start to the season. They lost to TCU in Week 1, got blown out by Air Force in Week 2, got blown out by Minnesota in Week 3, got blown out by UCLA in week four, and recently got blown out by Arizona. While all five of those teams are actually pretty decent, Colorado has not been competitive. They can't seem to do anything right on offense or defense, and that program is just completely broken right now. They're gonna have to nail their next hire, or Colorado will continue to be at the doormat of the Pac-12 and win the award of the worst team there. The SEC is going to be extremely difficult to pick. South Carolina, Missouri, and Vanderbilt are all three and two and pretty bad in the East, and Auburn has been a complete dumpster fire in the West. The one thing that is going for Auburn though, is that they have a conference win over Missouri. So while they might actually be the worst, they do have a win there, so we're gonna eliminate them. It's now gonna come down to Missouri, South Carolina, and Vanderbilt. Missouri has wins over both Louisiana Tech and Abilene Christian, and besides a blowout loss in week two to Kansas State, they've actually gotten more competitive. They should have won against Auburn, but they had a historic meltdown. And then this past weekend, they also had a meltdown against the number one team in the country in Georgia. They're leading the whole game until the end, and because of how much more competitive Mizzou has looked, we're going to eliminate them. It's now gonna come down to South Carolina and Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt won in week one against Hawaii, and then beat Elon in week two. In week three, they lost to Wake Forest, and then in week four, they beat Northern Illinois. In week five, they got killed by Alabama, and they are off to a 3-2 and two star. They have three wins over some pretty bad schools, but in my opinion, they are barely better than South Carolina. This will definitely come as a controversial take, but South Carolina struggled to put away Georgia State in Week 1, lost to Arkansas in Week 2, got killed by Georgia in Week 3, and then has recently beaten Charlotte and South Carolina State. This is definitely neck and neck for me, but with how bad they looked against Georgia, and with Vanderbilt just being a little bit more competitive, heck, we might as well just give it a tie. As we now head into the final conference, be sure to give the video a like and let me know your thoughts down below if you're enjoying today's video. When we look at the Sun Belt Conference, it's pretty obvious that Georgia State is the worst team. In week one, they went on the road and got beat by South Carolina before they almost upset North Carolina in week two. It's still extremely shocking that that happened, but the Panthers have had it tough this year. They lost by one point against Charlotte at home before getting beat by a couple of scores against Coastal Carolina. They're off to an 0-4 start, before this past weekend, they went on the road and beat Army. While I wouldn't blame them for three out of those four losses, the loss to Charlotte is inexcusable, and compared to the other teams in the Sun Belt, the Panthers are going to win the award as the worst team. Now that we've talked about the worst team from each conference, who is the worst team in college football? Well, I've narrowed it down to seven schools. New Mexico State, Charlotte, USF, Akron, Colorado State, Colorado, and Georgia State. While some of these one-loss teams are terrible, we're at least going to give them credit for winning a game. We'll eliminate Georgia State, Akron, USF, Charlotte, and New Mexico, and this will come down to the Rocky Mountain Showdown. Colorado State is currently 0-4, while Colorado is 0-5. If there was ever a year to play this game, it would definitely be this year, and there's a good chance both of these teams will finish the year winless. If I had to match these teams head-to-head, -head, though, I would end up picking Colorado, because A, I think they're just a little bit more talented, B, they've been challenged a bit more, they're not Colorado State. Colorado State might have the worst culture in college football right now, 
They have been non-competitive in pretty much every game, and Jay Norvell is in big time trouble if he doesn't fix things soon. The Rams take the trophy as the worst team in college football, but we will continue this series for the remainder of the season. But what do you think? In your opinion, who is the worst team in college football? What's another topic or player or team or situation I can take a look at in my next video? And before you go, don't forget to leave your thoughts in a comment. Leave a like if you want to support the channel. Subscribe if you're new. And check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace.